All right, so we have Danilo Marquez versus Kennedy and Zechiku. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly uh, for both. Uh, but yeah, so Danilo Marquez, he does have a one inch height advantage, but Nzechiku has a five and a half inch reach advantage. You know, very long reach on Nzechiku. Uh, one of the longest in UFC, so, you know, no shame in that. But also, you know, when you're taller than the guy and you're giving up five and a half inches in reach, well, that's pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, break down the striking of these two real quick. So for Danilo Marquez, he's no stand up threat. He's only really looking for takedown entries on the feet. Like, I won't even discuss his striking. It's, it's, there's zero. Uh, but for Nzechiku, he comes in as southpaw, he likes to fight the front foot. You know, not not what you would expect with the guy of his frame and his physical attributes. Uh, but yeah, he, he makes it work. So he likes to fight the front foot and comes in with that heavy pressure, high guard, uh, one-twos, you know, fundamental boxing, straight left. Has a nice high kick, you know, mix it in with a combination. Uh, quite slow to chamber it up, but, you know, it's quite effective when it does land, obviously. Getting to the grappling aspect of this fight, so obviously where Danilo wants to get it. Danilo doesn't set up a lot of his takedowns. His go-to takedown would be the single leg in the open, and then he'll, you know, try and get you to the fence, shoot a double from there. Try and get into the clinch after he shoots, or just clinch up with the opponent when they do close the distance. And he's very sticky with the body lock. If he gets the body lock on you, or just like if he gets double unders in the clinch, he'll just, you know, turn the corner, get the back body lock, and he's very comfortable from that position. And he has nice inside or outside leg trips from the clinch. Uh, and if you're not giving him what he wants uh, in the takedowns, if you're stuffing everything and if you're, you know, pummeling correctly, he will just pull guard if you can't get the takedowns. And for Nzechiku, if you do get him down, he scrambles immediately to get back to his feet. He does give up his back though, which is something that is very dangerous against a guy like Marquez. And Marquez, he's always looking for the back. He will even, you know, jump backpack at times in the clinch. Uh, so you do have to watch out for that if you are giving up the back body lock every time in a scramble, like Kennedy, I'm expecting him to do. Uh, but, you know, Danilo Marquez, he, uh, he sometimes he tries to get the uh, two leg hooks in a bit too quickly instead of, you know, at this like simultaneously or even just like getting the seatbelt grip first just to control the upper body of his opponent or just control his own upper body and not fall off. He can be a little too hasty with the leg hooks in my opinion, uh, but he does have a very tight squeeze when he does get the hooks in and when he does, you know, put in that rear naked choke. Like he choked out Mike Rodriguez real quick and I think it was with one arm, maybe? No, but um, he started it with one arm and then... You know, he was choking him out even with one arm and then finished it with uh, two arms, I believe, yeah. Uh, that's all I can remember. But yeah, how these guys win fights. So for Danilo Marquez, it's understanding where he's good at. He's obviously good at the ground, uh, on the mat, and that yeah, he's not very good on the feet. So he tries to get it to the mat at all costs, basically. And for Kennedy and Zechiku, it's that he's very durable. He's very tough. You know, you watch this guy's fights, and he never seems phased with what his opponents are hitting him with. Like, you watch the Carlos Olberg fight, Carlos was absolutely punishing his body. Dude was just not reacting at all. Like, he's incredibly tough, um, and it's going to be hard to hurt this guy. Uh, but yeah, so how these guys lose fights, so for Kennedy and Zechiku, uh, he's very passive in there, and I'll get into that in a sec, why I believe that is, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into it in a sec. Also, the striking tendencies, I didn't mention them here because Danilo's not going to do anything about it, but yeah, it is what it is. For Danilo Marquez, how he loses, it's poor cardio. Even in low pace fight, the dude's gassed. Um, yeah, I think Kennedy has a big cardio advantage here. Also, the fact that Danilo has zero stand-up game, zero reason for opponents to respect him on the feet. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. And also, I think he has a quite a suspect chin. On the regional scene, chin didn't look good at all. Past the victory for these two gentlemen. So, for Danilo, obviously, just try and get it into the clinch or just get it onto the mat. ASAP. For Kennedy, obviously, disengage the clinch, break immediately, break the body lock. Um, don't engage if he does pull guard. If he's stalling on a double leg, look for Travis Bound elbows, you know, really try and dig them in. Uh, also, at distance, just try and hold the center of the octagon so he can't just drive you into the fence. Uppercuts, he's just constantly shooting. He's constantly looking for takedown entries, so start throwing those uppercuts he starts spamming him, he's going to fall into him. Because the dude needs to clinch. The dude needs to get the fight to the mat. So just make sure you don't let him get those entries. Uh, but also high kicks, I guess. Uh, 
Maybe not, because he is quite slow to chamber those high kicks up, but, you know, high kicks, generally, grapplers, they do have to defend him, or they're just going to eat them. They can't really shoot underneath a high kick. You have to time it to perfection. And I don't believe uh, Marquez has the agility to time that. Um, but it is what it is. How I see the fight going. So for Kennedy, he's very physically gifted. You know, 6'5", 83 inch reach at 205 pounds. Uh, very nice frame for the division. But he is still very green and he's still uh, learning the nuances of the clinch and nuances of wrestling. Whereas Danilo is very adept in those positions. Uh, but he does seem very coachable, does Kennedy. He listens and acts on every command of Safe Sayud. And I think fighting in an empty arena is good for him here. Uh, while he's still in the infancy of his career. And I think this is good for his career going forward. Uh, but yeah, Safe Sayud better be calling shit out. Because when he wasn't. Kennedy just literally wasn't throwing anything in the Carlos Olberg fight. And that's what I was talking about, how Kennedy's a little bit too passive in there and, you know, needs command. Uh, but Safe Suit need, needs to be on his game because he better be calling shit out uh, or else Kennedy's just not going to do anything. Uh, but yeah, so it was just such an egregious case of bad fight IQ in the Paul Craig fight that makes you think, surely they must have worked on that tendency of Kennedy engaging on the mat. Um with Paul Craig, and then made him swear that he would never do that shit again. Uh, so, it was that egregious that you kind of have to work on it, and it wasn't really, it wasn't very subtle, so you would expect that they did work that out of Kennedy. You know, that fight was two years ago. He He's made a lot of improvements. Also, just a lot of improvements can be made in fight IQ in younger fighters in two years, so yeah. All in all, I believe Kennedy's takedown defense and submission defense will be good enough to stop the grappling assault of Danilo Marquez. I definitely am live to get PTSD from the Delidze vs. Staropoli fight when Danilo grabs the body lock and Kennedy literally just doesn't know how to get out of it, and that's what it is for 15 minutes. That's what I'm scared of. Um, you know, Marquez just body lock bullying Kennedy or Kennedy just giving his back as he tries to get back to his feet because one back take is probably all Danilo needs. Um, but I am going to take Kennedy here. I am um, going to think he's going to stuff all the takedowns. Even if he does, I think he's going to be able to weasel his way back up to the feet and, you know, find the kill shot eventually. So I'm not sure why Danilo Marquez was such a big dog to Mike Rodriguez, only to now be a favorite against Kennedy and ZQ. Like, everyone knew how garbage uh, Mike Rodriguez's takedown defense was and is. <laughs> um, it's literally some of the worst, like, in MMA. Um, and Danilo, you know, didn't really expose anything new. He just kind of fought how he was supposed to and took the guy down. So I'm not, sh I'm not sure why the guy's a favorite, uh, Danilo Marquez. I'm not sure why he's a favorite. He's not UFC level, in my opinion. Uh, he's very, very one-dimensional. And I think he's a really bad knockout when to happen. And uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm surprised he's 2-0 in the UFC, honestly. He's been matched up quite favorably, in my opinion, with two pretty average grapplers. Uh, Cadiz just gassed, I guess. Um, Cadiz is not very good. He got cut as well, anyway. And Mike Rodriguez is probably on the way to be cu uh, getting cut. And the, the guy just doesn't have any grappling game. Um, but Kennedy does, and he's very he's very coachable. And, you know, he, he seems like... He's going to be listening to Safe Sayud, and I think they're going to come in with the correct game plan, but also uh, the correct attitude in the fight, and I think he's going to be able to just get out of the uh, the grasp of Marquez in this one. Like, Kennedy is much better takedown defense than Mike Rod, and I think he's going to murk um, Danilo Marquez on the feet, honestly. Prediction is Kennedy by TKO in round two. Wouldn't be surprised at round one. Also wouldn't be surprised at a very lackluster decision if Kennedy was told to not engage on the ground at all, and he does that, I wouldn't be surprised at all. And I think that would be smart, honestly. Unless he's really rocked, I probably wouldn't even engage him on the ground. Uh, but yeah, so I think he should win around 65-70% of the time. The only time I think he loses is if Marquez takes his back or whatever, and I don't think... I think he'll be able to weasel his way out of it, as I said before. So yeah, I do think the line's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know why Marquez is a favorite. He's not even UFC level. He's very one-dimensional. Uh, I'm going to bet in Zachiku anything over $1.70 or minus 145, sorry. Um, and the, I think he's going to be a favorite come fight night. I probably wouldn't go big with the with the bet because just the fight IQ questions, but also the back-giving tendencies. 
So yeah, that, that's the only concerns there, but he really should win here.